I got the horse right here. The name is Paul. Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Sunday, May the 1st races. we got eight of them on top. May the 1st, we head into May, and of May. course... Kentucky Derby. May, May is the only thing that is, is associated in horse racing with... The, yeah, the, the Triple Crown, the Kentucky Derby, and then two weeks later, the Preakness. So this year, because uh, the Sunday is the first, the first Saturday of May falls on the 7th. I know, it's as late as it can be, as but uh, it it'll be, be a lot of fun to watch Nyquist. Yeah. And um, everyone, of course, around here will be pulling for, for Nyquist. The undefeated Mario. Nyquist. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, lots, lots of great press. You can find lots. Of, if you Google Mario and Nyquist, there's lots of great articles. Actually, as of taping tonight, uh, Thursday. If you do watch this yeah. tonight. Watch, if you watch this today, like uh, in the next hour or so, uh, it's about 3 o'clock, but uh, uh, you can watch Mario. 6 o'clock on, on CTV. CTV, yeah. and I know the global, everyone will have some stuff on, but, but yeah, 6 o'clock tonight on, on CTV, as you mentioned. As we are, as of taping, as you mentioned, about 10 days out, now is where we get the big push. There'll be lots of, uh, little Mario will be everywhere. Yeah, of course. Again. Again. On to the first race on Sunday. Got to feel the five three-year-old fillies in for a claiming price of 16000 Going six furlongs. I went to the four horse Keontae. Uh, looks like she might. There's like all five fillies want to be near the lead. Oh, yeah. Looks like on paper, other, maybe other than the five chestnuts gold, but the inside four horses all want to show speed. Keontae looks pretty fast from her race last year. She can run protected for 16 because she did break her maiden for 12 5. But the Dino Condolinos Barn has gone off to a great start. Watched Modern win the first stake when yeah. Omi, Omi went, won uh, the first maiden allowance for three-year-old fillies last week. And Chianti looks pretty good as well. Skylar Whiteshield's been doing quite a bit of work in the mornings for Dino, and the work time has been excellent. So I'll try Chianti, maybe to defeat the three. It's a factum for the Anita Bolton barn, who also has had uh, you know some nice races last year, showed some ability yeah. for a little more money, and uh, also was trained well. And I put the two-horse Oma in for third, uh, goes first time Lysix for Deer De Bell, and uh, another one training well. And, like Those three Phillies look to be the ones that are really uh, – Throwing it down in the mornings and, and look like Developing they're up and cut. They all have similar yeah. running styles, which makes it difficult to really uh, stand on a hill on one of them yeah. and, and you know defend <laughs> your pick. But uh, I'm going to go 4 3 2. I agree with Kianti. I put Kianti on top too. And what, what I like about her too is that all her siblings could run at three. You know, that nap has been a great uh, mare yeah, for. Uh, there's a bile of them. Yeah. Uh, for uh, the Swift Thoroughbred. So I give Canty on top of it's a factum. The other really looks like she has quite a bit of talent in here. I bought her in second. I put Chestnut's Gold, Charlene Miller's uh, little girl in here, in for third. Yeah, she broke her main for 25 last year. Mm -hmm. Only got beat five lengths in the fantasy mm -hmm. behind Snuggles and Cedar Eau Claire. Uh, th that's good enough for me, definitely in the third spot. I went 4 3 5 in the first. On to the second, a maiden 12 5 event for uh, three old and up. Boys, Colts and Geldings, a uh, field of six in here. And I went to the four here, Adams River Run. I went back to Anita Bolton to win the second. A good, I know he's a three year old, and there is a few four year olds in here. Mm -hmm. That's Mike's angle. Yeah, he likes no, those older horses. Uh, but I just thought there was a very good race last year. He was uh, the favorite in a maiden special weight. It was the first three and a half race. Uh, only got to be three links. Rico Walcott rode him that day. They paid 70000 for him in the BC sale. Peter Redicop did. And uh, now he shows up in the second start of his life for 12-5. I think there's more upside there, so I'm going to give him the nod. Uh, for the four, Adams River Run on top. I went to Southern Casanova, Patty Leaney's horse. As we mentioned in Saturday's uh, show, Patty Leaney's horses have been training very well uh, this spring, and I expect her to get off to a good mm -hmm. start. Nice four-year-old son of uh, Rosberg. Two good seconds in his last two races last year against, you know, three-year-olds and up. Right. So uh, I do have him in the second spot, and I put... Mighty Mesa out of the Mark Cloutier barn in the third spot. Mark's off to a good start. Too. Mark's off to a very good start. Uh, it's a Sky Mesa, pretty well-bred guy that they bought in Kentucky. Just a one start last year, and that was a very live race. He only got beat six lengths in a maiden special weight, but it was that McDove, Groot, Soul Cat. Right. That was a pretty live race, so I'll give him a nod for third. I went four, one, and five. Yeah, I'm going to the four-year-olds as, as usual. I'm yeah. pretty predictable. I went to the one Southern Ca Casanova to win it. Uh, Going to go without the blinkers. First two starts last year with were without blinkers. Uh, ran against you know some I thought tougher maidens last year, and has been training well as you mentioned. Skylar White Shield rides, so I, I'm going to go to that one to win. I put the two Hessler in for second for Sandra Loset. This was around second two. P.S. Betting on you, who would be one to nine in this race. Yeah. And uh, Royal Breyer, who has since come around uh, third, has since gone on to break 
his maiden in Phoenix and maiden allowance race. So, I mean, Hessler is surrounded by pretty good company. Once again, a four-year-old. I just think these two horses yeah. have a big edge on their younger rivals. I went one, two. I put the four horse Adams River run, who still has to prove he can go around two turns and, uh, you know, but a top outfit and an excellent owner, uh, Hall of Fame owner, Peter Redekop, and uh, should be interesting to see how this horse does. But he is a little, a little leery the horse show, surfaces for 12-5. Obviously something's gone amiss and not, not you know, crazy he's not, him, yeah. he hasn't progressed from his two-year-old year to his yeah. three-year-old year. So you better be pretty good though to beat some four-year-olds like Southern Casanova and Hessler. So I went one, two, and four in the Sunday second. On to the third race, the 62.50 Phillies and Mares here going six furlongs. I ended up on the six horse pretty reckless. Uh, missed the entire 2015 season, which is a little, a little leery about that, but her, her uh, her, her, you know, her ability is not in question. It's just whether she can get back to that, yeah. that form that she had in 2014. Her work time has been good for last year's leading trainer, and I'll, I'll give her a shot. I think Mike has another nice bullet in the tank with the three horse uh, flare miss as well. Another one that uh, could, could easily win in here. Another one training well. So and and aggressively spotted. You know, this horse isn't. This isn't a tough 6250. Yeah. It kind of came up like a four thousand dollar raise. So I think Flair Miss figures, and I think the four cute little vixen has a big chance as well. She won three races last year. Uh, seldomly ran a bad one, and uh, just just a cool little filly that just continues to run. It's just a gritty little thing. That yeah, I can see Runs winning if both horses, Flair Miss and Pretty Reckless, who are both. Probably more gifted than her. If they don't show their A game, then cute little vixen can win. I'm playing three horses in here, and they're six, three, and four. I went with a six. I agree with you. With pretty, mm -hmm. pretty reckless, uh, you know, she as you mentioned, she never ran last year. She did miss the, the 2015 campaign. However, the last time we saw her, she was running against a lot better mares like Trelawney and Hidden Harbor oh, no, that's and, crazy and Madeira what Park. She was up against. Though. Yeah, she, you know, she's she's got the back class if she's at all right. Uh, you know, Hamill obviously had some other options in yeah, here. He no, took, Flair Miss. Yeah, because yeah, he could have been on Flair, he could have been on he, Flair he Miss. He was been riding Flair Miss yeah. last year. And he and elected first to go choice. pretty yeah. reckless. So yeah. I took pretty reckless on top. I put Q-Little Vix in the second spot. As you mentioned, three uh, wins last year. A good, nice little record last year. Six and nine in the money. Yeah, she can sprint. She route. always shows up. She does up, everything. Yeah. Yeah, and Barb's sure. off to a very good start. Uh, four starts for her, a second, two-thirds. And all, all, They've all been running very well. Oh, they're live. Yeah, so I like the way that Barb started off the meet. I have her in the second spot. And I put Miserable Blue in the third spot. Kind of the wild card in here. Steve Henson claimed this filly out of Turf Paradise this winter and, uh, you know, she was stringing together some nice races and uh, shows up here, you know, he claimed it for eight, shows up here for 62.50. I think she's live enough mm -hmm. in here and Miserable Blue, one of my favorite colors. I went six, four, and five in the third. On to the fourth. Three olds and up 12.5. It's a good little race here. I went with the classy old veteran, number four, Lauren 500, 16-time uh, winner. The other five horses in this field have won a combined 18 races. Lauren 500 has won 16 by himself. Uh, he is the classy old veteran in here. I got him on top. I put O'Derek, uh, a horse that only ran twice last year. Last time we saw him, he is, you know, a four-year-old mm -hmm. graduating into the older company. But last time we saw him, he only got beat three links by Cedarburg and Bluegrass Angus and Cats on Fire. Some nice horses. Mm -hmm. So if he progresses into uh, a good four-year-old mm -hmm. He's definitely live in here. Sylvia Gregory, uh, again, another one that's off to a good start. And, uh, you know, she definitely has her horses ready this time of year. And I put after the conflict, uh, Patty Leaney, again, uh, you know, her horses look very live. I like that last work in a minute and two-fifths. And uh, he's a pretty cool horse. Always seemed to, sh sh you know, show up and run big uh, every now and then. Was running mostly in tougher races last year. In for 12-5, he should be live. I went four, three, and one. Yeah, I agree with the four horse Lauren 500. How can you go against uh, this guy boy, yeah. that just continues to just, he's as honest as, I've seen him work in the mornings. He looks great. He doesn't look like he's 10 years old or yeah. nine years old. He, he's a, he's an. He'd run right through, right? Because he ran last uh, winter at Golden Gate. Now this year he's had the time off. And, and, and he looks there, great. Yeah. No, he looks great. Angie Smith gets on him in the mornings for Rob and, uh, she, you know, he, he pulls, he, he, he's got great weight on him. He's got a beautiful coat on him. He looks like he has been in California. This horse looks great. <laughs> Lost awesome. 500 and uh, he's live in here. And I think he'll run a good race. Uh, number two distillery. I'm going to put in the second spot. Yep. Uh, this horse started last year uh, for a lot more money. Ran against Brackendale. Ran against uh, yeah. Devil in Disguise. Way tougher horses. And ran well. It, it's just nice to 
And when you start on, on the top or in the high end, and then have to work your way down, it's way tougher. This year, at least, he can start in mid-level and then maybe work his way yeah. up because he is a better horse than a 12-5 horse, but he, he's got to get a confidence boost. He didn't win a race. You know, he, he needs to to start at a proper level, and it's nice to get he, he's protected for 12-5, and he's working well. The young kid, uh, Jose Mariano Asensio, has, has looked great in the mornings and has looked good in the yeah. afternoons winning. So he's a nice little bug boy rider. So I, I just give this horse a shot. Uh, distillery for second. I put the one after the conflict. Who's always salty at the 12-5 level. Good, honest, speed horse. It just runs around there fast. Only six furlongs. That's a big bonus for after the conflict because yeah. he's fast and can carry his speed a long ways. 4-2-1 and one for me in the fourth. On to race number five. This is the start of late pick four. $4,000 non-two claimers going six and one half. We're going to stretch out here. Six and a half furlongs. Uh, I got nine of them signed on. I went to the three horse. One to believe. I was between the one and the three. Yeah. I... They were close last time, but one to believe was the one doing the fighting on the head end. Nana's buddy ran him down late, and it cost him second. I I just thought those two horses were the horses. Uh, Mario's win's probably the better horse, but I'm going to take a shot that one to believe gets things a little easier on the head end. Won't get bothered the opening quarter like he did last time. Had to draw off. Went 46 and one. That was fast that day. Those, that opening half mile because that second fraction was yeah. faster than the first, and that's why he drew off. But he. He gassed himself. Maybe things were a little more relaxed uh, in this particular dash because I don't see a lot of speed in here. I think he gets the lead to himself and maybe can turn the tables on the one Mario's win. Put the seven horse, Mr. Candy, in for third. Uh, just a horse that I know he looks at, he, he's trying to find himself. Phoenix didn't help. Uh, he's, you know, he's just an average horse that uh, used to have a bit of class, ran at Woodbine, Gulfstream, and uh, but uh, he needs another. He needs a win, and uh, maybe yeah. to get rolling again. But I put him in for third. I went three, one, and seven in a race that I didn't love anyone. I, I, I actually I shouldn't say not love. I, I do like the three, one to believe. I went three, one, seven. I went with Mario's win, the one horse. In yeah, the horse is the, the logic. Yeah, I looked like a winner last time and got caught, caught late by yeah. Nana's buddy. But uh, yeah, R Richard booked off that day too. That's why uh, Reyes, Reyes was, him, was yeah. on it, and it's Richard's mountain. That's why he's back on. It's not yeah. that Reyes chose. Did anything wrong or anything? Yeah. No, yeah. or not that Reyes yeah. chose it. I don't know if he's on anything, yeah, but he's not, it's no. not, it, it's Richard's mount. That's yeah. why he's on the horse. Yeah, yeah, and, and he, I mean, looked like a winner last time halfway mm -hmm. down the stretch and just got caught. So right. I got him on top. I put New Jersey Joe in the second spot. He comes out of that same race, but he had a lot of trouble in that race. And I always pick this guy, so I put him in the second spot. I like he's this horse. He's a cool little guy. Dirty, yeah, I know he's got the nine hole, which is, isn't any fun. But he had. A, he did have a, uh, if you go back and watch, he did not have a lot of fun last time. If he gets a cleaner trip, he should be right mm -hmm. there. And I put Mr. Candy uh, in the third spot. For the reasons you just mentioned, this was a horse at one point. They were thinking... Uh, uh, BC Derby, Derby well, he was supposed to be, yeah. And uh, just hasn't turned out, but uh, the, the, the talent's That's there if you can put it together. Uh, 197 for me in the fifth. Auto six, three olds and up 4,000 non-winners of the year. And I have gone to the three. DJ Snow out of the John Snow Barn. Another one that had a pretty rough trip last time, uh, you know, got uh, left pretty bad. And uh, I just think with a, a better break, he's got a race under his belt now. I like DJ Snow. John's horses are running very well right now. Uh, Amadeo Perez sticks with him. I put Jordan's Quest in the second spot. Very speedy guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Skylar Whiteshield takes call for Craig McPherson. He should get out of the gate good. He's going to be the horse you probably have to run down to beat. And I put the four after the court for Hall of Fame trainer Frank Barabian. Just an honest, uh, cool old guy. 11 races last year. Six of them were in the money. So uh, I'll put him in the third spot. I went three, two, and four. Yeah, I have the top three. Uh, I went to the four after court. Uh, he's been working absolutely lights out. He's looked great in the morning uh, with Jason Rodriguez in the iron. So he's he's worked well. And uh, I know Antonio Reyes rides him today, but uh, J-Rod does all, all the morning work for yeah. Frank and Harold Baraby. But uh, give him some props. But uh, after court, this horse, when he settles in behind the speed, He's all very dangerous, and uh, he can fire fresh. I like after court. But the two-horse Jordan's quest didn't uh, draw in last week, or I think it was two weeks. Yeah, Maybe it was last weeks, week. Uh, last, last week or two weeks. Or two anyway, weeks the horse, he, he was unfortunate not to. Yeah. He drew the 11 and didn't get any. He was on the also. But the uh, horse has been training well for Craig McPherson. And I put the three-horse DG Snow, who I liked last time. I thought he got a favorable pace scenario. Didn't seal the deal. Got beat by a stablemate street map. And... I did, he just went down a peg for me off of that race, yeah. and uh, I just don't see a, a wild pace in here. You got Roy's Dream, who comes from out of it. Maddie the Bull comes from out of it. Passion Red flashes some speed. Lord Harlow comes from. George's Quest could be tough. I, to I, I just don't see a lot of yeah. speed to help DG Snow, and that's yeah. why I don't want to 
st you know, stand alone with him. But I put him in for third. I still respect him enough and the way the barn's going. How about 4-2-3? On to race number seven. That's an uh, excellent feature race. Optional 50. Going six and a half furlongs for three-year-olds and upward while they're all older horses. I ended up on the three-horse brass and gold. I think he could be the controlling speed in here. Not a lot of speed in this race. Mm -hmm. If you look, where, where, where is the front end going to, where is the speed going to come? Not that he's a super speed horse, but I just see maybe a 23 flat opening quarter here. And uh, Rass and Gold might, you know, enjoy that. But it is his first race of the year. He's going to have to beat Shooting Jacket, who has a race under his belt. I got him in for second. He was a great closing third behind Modern and Hollywood Angel, who are two of the best, of the, two, of the two top older horses on the grounds right yeah. now. Well, I guess Square Dancer. We'll see yeah. him in the stake next weekend. But uh, And I put the one-horse Slicer Red, who I've always liked, uh, cool horse. Probably a little better going longer, but he can win sprinting. He did win an uh, optional claimer last year before going to the sidelines, but has trained well. Another one with Angie Smith. Uh, she gets on a lot of nice horses, Angie yeah. Smith, in the mornings, a former ex-rider, but uh, uh, excellent gallop girl, and she gets on Slice of Red. I went 3-5-1, and one. I just think, uh, but there's a lot of, Sedin's a nice horse, yeah. uh, Don't Hold Me Back's coming in from Phoenix, Fit, S uh, I have no idea what to do with Sabato Allegre, uh, and Remember to Breathe is a cool, this is a really, a really good quality yeah. seven horse allowance race that, you know, you can make, you can make a case, a case for, it, yeah. for anybody, and uh, I'm going to stand with three, five, and one just because of the pace scenario. Is Brass and Gold the best horse in the race? I'm not sure, but he might be the best horse just because he might get the lead in here, and that's all. I did go with Shooting Jacket. I thought that was a huge race. He's got the race under his belt, and, you know, he, he just got beat in nose. Looked like he actually ran second in that stake. Ended up running third. Yeah, no, I, I can't Rangers. believe he lost that photo. I thought he won the photo, too, uh, but only got Every beat a length and a quarter good. by Modern. Uh, you know, Modern's arguably the best older horse here, especially sprinting, and only get beat a length and a quarter by him. I thought it was a huge effort uh, for the Hastings Racing Club. Two horse, Shooting Jacket. I put Brass and Gold in the second spot. I do like the fact that Shooting Jacket has the race under his belt. Mm. Brass and Gold comes in. Uh, this is his first start of the year, but he's been training forwardly. As I mentioned, all Barb's horses have been running well, and uh, he's just a street fighter. He, you know, he always puts in a good effort. You look at those... I love this horse. He, he never gets beat far. He gets beat yeah, by Square Yeah, I mean, look at that one, two back with Square him. Dancer. He, he ran fourth. He got beat three quarters of a length. Uh, he could run six and a half. He ran a mile and three eighths. Yeah. Like, yeah, how many yeah. horses do that? Exactly. You know, like, he's yeah, a, no, he's, he's always he dangerous. Cool, he's cool. Dude. I got him in the second I, spot. And Slice I'm Red. Prejudice to him. But yeah, I mean, of course he, you are. Yeah, he, but but he, he's a cool horse. He's a street fighter. I, I, I really like him, mm -hmm. too. I got him in the second spot. And Slice of Red, as you mentioned, only saw him twice last year. He's a very talented horse. He's obviously had some issues throughout his life. He hasn't ran a whole lot. Only nine starts, and he's a five year old. Gifted. But he's been working very well for this. Out of I got him in the champion mare, Regal Red. Five, three, one. Yeah, Regal Red. Boy, she's thrown a yep. lot of runners. Yep. Five, three, and one for me in the seventh. On to the eighth. Three year olds and up non winners that are going six. Our good friend, four thousand dollar friends. Furlongs. I went to the one. This is the moment. Only got beat a length and three quarters in that street map race. Leo's in the house goes up. He stays right at this level. Six and a half is going to, th I think, a little bit better for him, too. He's a cool horse. He can win sprinting. He can win mm -hmm. going long. But I think six and a half is better for him. Richard Hamill sticks with him. I put Swiss Arrogant in the second spot. I thought a big effort, and I don't see a lot of speed in here. I think he's going to no, get the lead get again. Lead. And uh, he hung on a long ways last time. But now he has another half for long to uh, contend with. That's why I went this is one with Swiss Arrogant in second. And who did I throw in for third? Timber Topper of the Taylor Anderson Barn. Another kind of cool guy that can get on a roll. His second start last year was a winning one after a bad Eighth by ten, came back and won in his second start. So interesting to see what he'll do in his second start this year. I went one, four, and seven. Yeah, it's a good little race. Uh, I know there's only seven of them, but I do go to the Timber Topper. I think this horse can uh, work out a bit of a trip because, as you mentioned, there's not a lot of speed. I think Timber Topper can get could be the one stalking Swiss Arrogant, yeah. and I want to be that horse. Swiss Arrogant has had trouble carrying his speed at times. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win. I left him off the ticket, but it might be a silly move. Actually, I probably will put him in if I play four horses, but, I mean, Swiss Arrogant's a nice horse that just, you know, got a little tired the last part. But uh, I, I just think Timber Topper had a little tough trip last time, had a wide draw, and but had other horses in the way making it difficult for him. There isn't, Stallman Pete and Bluegrass Man will likely drop back. He won't have any problem getting over it. And yeah. a six and a half can get up. It's better distance for Timber Topper. And I thought 
I thought he ran a creditable race considering he was probably used a little harder than he would have liked to be uh, through the opening half mile and he flattened out a bit late but he still fought on. I'd like him to win it. This is the moment I agree with him. He's live but I just thought I'd try the timber chopper over this is the moment. And the two chapel boy you didn't throw him in. Yeah, He's one of your all-time favorites. Yes, but I always pick Chapel Boy. He always runs well. Harold's off to yeah. a great start as well. 7-1-2 for me, but I would put in the four. Swiss Arrogant, that would be my fourth one. But I went 7-1-2 and two in the Sunday finale. That's all eight of them. Uh, next up on screen will be our quick recap of those eight lovely selections we've given you. Back in race number one, I went to the four, Keontae. Four, three, and two in the Sunday opener. Race number two went to the one Southern Casanova. The two Hessler went to the two four-year-olds to defeat the uh, younger rivals. One, two, four for me in the second. Third race, number six, pretty reckless on the comeback. Six, three, four. Race number four, the four, the ultra-consistent Lauren 500. How can you not love this old guy? Four, two, and one in the fourth. Race number five, the three, one to believe. Hopefully a wire-to-wire -wire performance to defeat the likely favorite. Number one, Mario's win. Three, one, and seven for me in the fifth. Race number six, the four after court for Frank Barabee. Four, two, and three for me in the sixth. Race number seven, number three, Barras and Gold to perhaps pour, get a little minor upset over the five shooting jacket and the one slice of red in the eighth and final number seven. Timber topper for Taylor Anderson, seven, one, and two. On um, my picks, there we go. In the first, I went with the four as well, Chianti over the three and the five. In the second, I went to the four again, Adams River Run over the one and the five. In the third, number six, Pretty Reckless over the four and the five. In the fourth, the tough old horse, Lauren 500, number nice four cool. over the three and the one. In the fifth, number one, Mario's win, which we're all hoping for a week Nyquist. from Saturday. Nyquist. Yes, yeah. over the nine and the seven. In the sixth, number three, DJ Snow over the two and the four. In the seventh, the uh, nice allowance race. I went to the five, shooting jacket over the three, brass and gold, and the one, slice of red. And in the nightcap, I went to the one, this is the moment, over the four and the seven. All right, that'll do it for this edition of uh, Handicapper's Corner, our May 1st edition. We're already into May, and as uh, May yep. does bring, uh, of course, the Kentucky Derby. Just a quick reminder, uh, if you do not have plans to be at the track on, on Saturday, May the 7th, please do uh, come on out to the Derby Barn Grill. There are... A couple of... I believe there's a couple tables left. Not yes. much left. Things are selling out quickly, uh, but do plan to be out here for a great afternoon at the Derby Barn Grill. If not, get to Hastings or Fraser Downs. It'll be a lot of... Yeah, uh, Hastings will have the big screen up, and uh, it'll yeah. be very much a party atmosphere. Because uh, Nyquist and Mario Gutierrez being in the spotlight is going to be uh, extra special. Everyone's got a little uh, you know, soft spot for Mario, and we'll all be pulling for him. So that'll Absolutely. be on... The next, that'll be our next live card, Saturday, May the 7th as well. We also race on Sunday, May the 8th. So next live cards will be next Saturday and Sunday. On behalf of Drew, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed the program. Hopefully we get you some winners. We'll see you next time here at the Derby Barn Grill.